king for. Big God. That's right. Little devil. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Big God. Little devil. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. We praise you today, God. I'm amazed at you. Your word is real. Your presence is here. You can do anything. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what is it that she needs? Just your word, your good word to me, to the Lord. Good word. Big God. Come on. Little yeah. devil. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Best word ever. Got the truth. Yeah. That's it. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's what I came for today. Thank you for having me. Amen. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. You know, if you think she came for me, she came for Jesus. That's, that's right. right. To hear through you, Pastor Matt. Uh, yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. I was just... Watch out. Oh, yeah. It was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. heard him down at the door. He got the truth. I heard him falling, man. You did. You heard those chains. Yeah. Round, round, round. Chains. 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 God breaks every chain. Yes. Praise God. Woo. God breaks every chain. Every last free. chain. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's it's interesting that that Jesus is who we need. Yes. yes. Jesus <laughs> is the one we need. That's right. He has done everything. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> It, Proverbs 28, 26 says, Those who trust in themselves are foolish. Yes. Yes. Romans 3, 27 says, What is there left to brag about? Right. What is there left to brag about? Jesus has got it done. Amen. Hallelujah. What Jesus did on the Thank cross, the before the cross, and through his life, he has done the work. That's it. Praise the Lord. Now, Amen. we'll get to the other part. In 1 Corinthians 1, 30, he says, By his doing, you are in Christ. Amen. By God's doing, you are in Christ. God didn't pick you because you were smart, because you were pretty, because you were stupid. That's or right. He didn't. No, God picked you so His glory could be shown in you. Amen. That's why He did it. Amen. Isaiah 43, 25 says, He blots out our sin for His name's sake. Amen. Hallelujah. He blots out our sin for His name's sake. You know, if God doesn't do, God doesn't necessarily do it for us. He does it for His own namesake, because we are called by His name. When He calls us, He blots out our sin for His namesake. That's right. Woo, hallelujah! I like that part. In First Corinthians one thirty-one, it says, "Let him who boasts boast in the Lord." Yeah, that's right. So anything we have to boast about today, we boast in God. Not how much we've studied, not how much we worship, not how much, not how much even that the presence of God shows up in our worship services. That is not it. It is Him. We boast in the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. It's all about Him. It is all about Him. You know, in the Old Testament, God always speaks to the children of Israel. Almost always. He spoke to Moses and a couple other guys, but usually he's speaking to the children of Israel. In the New Testament, Jesus usually and almost uh, almost always talks to the individual. He speaks into people's lives. He looks right at the individual and says, follow me. He says, what is that to you? What if he lives yes. forever? What's that to you? You follow me. He's always speaking to the individual person. He lived his life right, and it changed everyone else's. Because Jesus did what he did. It says in Philippians 2, uh, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the very form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient at the point of death, even the death on the cross, therefore, God has highly exalted him. Not just because Jesus Christ was the Son of God did God exalt him. 
Because Jesus did what the Father told him to do. That's right. And it changed everybody's lives. That's right. Amen. Absolutely everybody. Woo. Hallelujah. The Father did the works, right? Yes. The Father gave him the words. The Father gave him the ideas. The Father gave him the compassion. But he was moved by it. And to speak, spit, make mud, lay hands on people, bless people, whatever he did. He was moved by the Father. And the Father did the work, but Jesus had to get involved in the deal. Right. Hallelujah. Okay. <coughs> the Bible says in uh, Philippians 2, if you're there with me, you can go there. It's a good place. In Philippians, the second chapter, I'm going to stay there for a minute, and then I'm going to go to Romans um, 14, if you want to catch up. So there in Philippians, the second chapter, In the 12th verse, we'll start in the second half of the 12th verse. It says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Same reason Jesus did it. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Well, hallelujah. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless, the children of God, without fa without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you let shine as lights in the world. Amen. So we are the light of the world, just as Jesus is the light of the world. Like Father, like Son, like Master, like Disciple. <coughs> Jesus not only gave us life, but He showed us how to live it. Yes. <coughs> Hallelujah. Whatever we do, we do to the Lord. Because we are the Lord's, right? Yes. Whether we live, we live to the Lord. Whether we die, we die to the Lord. Whether we eat, we eat to the Lord. Whether we don't eat, we don't eat to the Lord. Whether we wear a mask, we don't wear a mask. Whether we vaccinate or don't vaccinate, who gives a rat's kazoo? We do it unto the Lord one way or the other. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You know, you just have to bring it in. You know, we want to add something all the time. <laughs> you know, they came up with crusties, I think it was crusties, right? Crusties uh, pancake mix. Just mix water and, and put it on. You know, it didn't sell many things. But then they did research and they found that if you, the second time they broadcasted it was uh, add one egg and mix and then it'll be, see? Sold like crazy. Why? Because we want to add something. Yep. <laughs> How many here, when you looked at the Krusty's package, added the egg anyway? I don't know. It was a, a, a biscuit. Biscuit. Krusty's, whatever it is, the, the instant stuff. I added an egg. In fact, I didn't add water. I added an egg and milk. Yep. And sometimes I added an egg with buttermilk. Why? Because I wanted to add something. I want to get involved in this thing. Praise the Lord. We're like that, you know. We get we we want to we want to add something to what Jesus has done. So we add legalism, you know. <laughs> I was thinking about false prophets. Prophets last week. We were talking about this on Tuesday. And you know, false prophets. We look for false prophets in the church, you know. Once you know the media is a false prophet. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. They are preaching things for real. And they are prophesying things that are not true. They're false prophets. We look for people, you know, you know, that guy's a false prophet. I heard him say one thing wrong. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's great. Pastors are great. You know, pastors, if you screw up, we invite you back every time. You know, you're drunk, you go out, you're drunk, you go out, you do this, you do that. But boy, the pastor screws up one time. I, <laughs> I've had a lot of people just... Head out, you know. <laughs> but you know what? What happens then is we sow. Yes. We sow people. Yeah. We sow people into different churches in our community. Amen. We've sowed them into our other churches. When uh, another church came into town, a whole bunch of our guys went over that church. Did we get mad? No. No way, man. We just sowed them into different <laughs> churches. Hallelujah. I'm excited about what God is doing in His body. Amen. I'm excited about people finally dropping off their BS yes. and go ahead and drop into a place where we love one another Ooh. exactly the way we are. Amen. I like it when you like me the way I am. Yes. Yes. Because I'm not going to change for you. 
No. Thank you. And I hope to God you don't change for me. <coughs> okay? God forbid that you would change for me. Holy cats. We change as unto the Lord. Whatever we do, we do as unto the Lord. It's right. exciting Everything. to do stuff unto the Lord. Everything. We work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Every one of our things we do in God, almost every test we have in Christ comes in, uh, almost every test we have comes in interpersonal relationships. Every one of our tests come like that. As we keep our focus on Jesus, then our tests, I just asked myself the other day, where's Jesus Christ in this? Because I got all mad at somebody. You know, I do that once in a while. I got all mad at somebody that says, well, where's Jesus Christ in this? And he wasn't anywhere in it. All of our tests come in their personal relationships because oh, that's what life is about. Personal relationships. Thank you, thank you. So excited. Praise the Lord. So, how you, so what you do, you live for God. In fact, um, it's all about, let me read this. How we live here and what we do here, we must give account for. It says in Romans 14, 12, and 13. So each one of us shall give an account for God, to God for what we do. That's right. Not judging. No, let's, let's, let's go there just for a second. Romans 14. Where are we going? Romans, Romans the 14th chapter. I, I told you before. Sorry, I was coughing. Whoa, okay. Romans 14, 12, it says, So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. <laughs> you don't have to give account for the other guy. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in your brother's way. That's right. Now, has anybody this week put a cause to fall in his brother's way? No. Good. I did. Nope. Yeah, I, wasn't, I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> and I was going, you know, you got to consider the source. Somebody comes to you and does something nasty to you, you just consider the source. Would this guy actually do that to me on purpose? Water? Probably not. Yeah. Okay, then he probably okay. didn't do it on nope. purpose. I used to think and if he did it on purpose, what's our obligation? Thank you. Love him anyway. Forgive him. Pray yeah. for him. Forgive him. The Bible says if anybody has, if when you come before the Lord, if you have ought against anybody, work it out with him. And it also says, if you come to the Lord and find out that somebody is out against you, work it out with them. So whose responsibility is it? Either way. Mine. My responsibility to yep. work it out. The Praise the Lord. So you don't just, so you don't just, uh, Sweep it under the right. me, I'm the kind of guy that just escapes. Yeah. I'm an escaper, man. I get in a fight with you. you know, I, I leave for three, four hours, five hours, six hours. Yeah, I got a bunch of boxes of screws. I go out there and sort out my boxes of screws. <laughs> it take me three days. Like that. that's, how I, that's how I get my house clean. Yeah. That's how you get your house clean. Say, right. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, what was it? The Emperor's New Groove? Yeah. It's up in her house and she goes, it just makes me so mad, I gotta go clean something. <laughs> anyway, you didn't see that, I guess. Okay. So, as long as we don't put a, a stumbling block in our brother's way, then it's up to us to work it out. So, if we don't work it out, whose fault is that? Ours. Ours. It's my fault. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm glad it's my fault. Then I can take care of it. That's right. If it's the yeah. other guy's fault, I can't take care of that. No. That's now, hard. when you go to somebody and try to work without... <laughs> Work it out with them, and they tell you to go pee up a rope. That's not your. Uh, that's right. That's not your responsibility. Yeah. I taught this over and over in this place. Good. It's not your responsibility. You go to try to work it out, and you know. Yeah. Can't be their punching bag or their doormat. You can if you want. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> not a punching bag. Not a punching bag. I've had a lot of people come to me, they're punishing their wives and stuff like that. It's not okay. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just pray for them. That's right. Yes. And shut up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay. So not judging, yeah, but putting, not that. putting a stumbling block or a reason to fall in your brother's <coughs> head. I found out in here, and I've blown this a couple times, that I talk about drinking wine and, and stuff like that, you know. I want you to know you don't talk about drinking wine with a bunch of alcoholics around. <laughs> <laughs> Just mentioning it screws them up. Yeah. Triggers them. Just saying the, the word wine and we'll, 
know. Triggers. Yeah, it's something about it. It just does that. So I've done that in this place, so I've repented of that. Praise the Lord. I don't see any real crazy alcoholics in here except for you. I do. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and you. Oh. <laughs> and me. <laughs> 20 years, glory to God. No, I got the guy 15, 45. 24, praise the Lord. See, there's another one over here. 43. So, so I, don't, I don't talk, but people are just coming off. People are just getting done. You don't mention that stuff. Yeah. You know? you just don't mention it. It just it causes them to fall. Okay. And I put down here, in your brother's way. Yeah. How we live here and what we do here, we must give account for. So, let us go on. The natural outflow of a life that's been redeemed, for someone who's been pardoned, set free, forgiven of a great debt, who's been spared from certain death, is gratitude and a life that shows it. <laughs> you know, I've had a lot of people say, Matt, we come to your church because you don't judge us. So, so what should we do if somebody judges us? My sister, <coughs> I was in a, let me put it this way, I was in a church in Tonopah, who didn't believe like I believe. But I was there and I served them, I helped them build their church, I had them clean up their yard, I helped them do everything. Until one day, uh, the guy was talking about talking in tongues, right? And he says, no, talking in tongues is from the devil. You know, I, I put up with it right up until then. And I, I was okay with that. And I says, listen, uh, and these people love me. I love them. I still do love them. Yeah. But that guy said that. I said, listen, I, I talk in tongues. Am I from the devil? <laughs> but he turned around and looked at me like I was, you know, like I fell out of somewhere else, some alien thing. Mars. And, and uh, there was no answer, so I had to leave. I had to leave that church. I didn't want to leave because it was a really cool place. But anyway, it was God's timing anyway. I'd been going there for like six months a year. So I got their church built anyway. That's a good thing. You should ask them what Bible was reading. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, because <laughs> well, that's all there is. I ain't going for it either. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible is you, 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 you don't do You just don't put them in a box, you know, yeah. that poor guy. I felt sorry for him, actually. Praise the Lord. So, uh, so. I wrote down here, is gratitude, uh, oh yeah, what is a life that shows, it's, it's a life that shows gratitude, okay, and how do I show gratitude, I wrote down here, how do you show your gratitude towards the Lord, how do you show your gratitude towards God that he's given you all this stuff, and he, he's blessed you, and he's ministered to you, and he's, uh, what did I say, pardon you from certain death, uh, set you free, forgiven of a great debt, etc., what, what do you show, how do you show your gratitude? The Bible is pretty clear on how you show your glad gratitude to God. You start ministering to other people. So Jesus spoke to other people. It's our, our privilege to speak to other people. It's so exciting. And so I show my gratitude by edifying, comforting, showing compassion, supplying necessities, etc. But some things distract me. We get into distractions. Regina's going to preach a message on distractions either next week or the week after, maybe. Probably not the week after, because she's leaving. But oh, anyway, no. she's, she, she's not going far. <laughs> <laughs> not, not leaving, <laughs> Buster said she's leaving again. <laughs> she's, taking her, she's taking her mom to, the, to Idaho. So, so I'm, anyway, okay. So here we got, so I wrote down here, why was Jesus so perturbed with the Pharisees if he was so in interested in individuals? Why was Jesus so perturbed with the Pharisees? I think it was because they misrepresented the Father. Yes, yeah. they did. They were a representation of God on earth. They were the yes. priests of God. They were supposed to represent who the Father was like. Okay? So, <laughs> you know, sometimes we think that... Uh, when I give myself to God, it's about deliverance from sin. It's about gaining heaven. It's about being useful to God. It's about being filled with the Holy Spirit so God can put me on display and whatnot. Yeah. But this thing is about Jesus. Yes. yes. All of Along with Jesus comes salvation, deliverance from sin, holiness, fullness of the Spirit, etc. Everything. But in, so we don't get hung up so much on sanctification or holiness or what the Word says here or what the Word says That's there. Right. We get hung up about our relationship with God. 
When our relationship with God is right, then our relationship with everybody else turns out really nice. Hallelujah. And you start being uh, better to people. I have read, read a thing by Max Lucado. I was just going to bring the book, but I'm going to try to tell the story. He sat down on an airplane with a, a Jewish rabbi. He knew he was a Jewish rabbi because his beard looked like Dan's, and he had those yarmulkes, the curls, the curls that go down. Well, the yarmulke, but they're uh, those curls. Yarmulke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway. So he sat down with the guy, and the guy saw him reading the Bible, and so he says, "So you like Jewish Jewish authors?" <laughs> he looked over at him. So, so he started talking, and his rabbi started talking. So he said. Who could offer a sacrifice and not weep for God's grace? Ooh. Ooh. Who could read about the servants uh, redeeming their kinsmen and not think about God redeeming us? Ooh. And then he said, who could read the third commandment without remembering to live for God's glory? Mm. And, and Max, he said, wait, wait, wait. So he turned over there. He says, what does that say? So in Exodus 20, verse 7, it says, thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord thy God in vain. So he looked at him like, you going to explain what you said? So what's that got to do with uh, living for God's glory? He says, don't think language, think lifestyle. Yeah. When we think taking the name of the Lord in vain, we think of cursing, like God damn, you know, and stuff Not like it. that. But think of lifestyle. Right. So he gave this, so he gave this, uh, this illustration. There was a daughter of a CEO, and he worked, she, they all worked in the same building, but the the father was up on the top floor. He, he was there. Most people never saw him. But the daughter worked for him. Okay? And one day she came up to uh, Bert, the guard, who was on duty, and she asked him to go down to the store to get her a Danish. He says, but I'm on duty. She says, well, hurry up then. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, now, what is the guard going to think? He's going to think, well, like daughter, probably like father. Maybe he's goofed up too, right? So she goes down the way, a ways, and she bumps into a secretary, knocks all of her papers out of her hands. She said, uh, I need you to come and vacuum my, my office. She said, I, I got to deliver these. There's a meeting here this afternoon. She says, well, hurry up then. So, you know, so the, what's, the, what's she going to think? She's going to think, well, maybe, maybe the CEO is as sharp as I thought he was. You know, I thought this company was running pretty good. And so, this, late, this girl never says her dad said, never mentions his name, never does anything, but everybody knows she is the daughter of the boss. That's right. Yeah. Okay? So, her insensitive living muddies her father's reputation. And you know where this is going, I know. Yeah. So, everyone is questioning the boss's wisdom, his ability, etc. Okay. Then... He says, let's go to a different story here. He says, same uh, another CEO, another daughter. But what if when she sees Bert, she realizes that she's always coming in early. And she says, you know, you always come in early. So I bought you a cup of coffee and a Danish here. Okay? So the secretary, she bumps into the same secretary, knocks and says, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me get those for you. Let me carry them to the office. And she carries them to the office. She engages people. She asks about their families, she offers them coffee, welcomes new employees, mm -hmm. praises the hard workers, raises the happiness and the level of the whole place. Wow. Isn't that good? Yeah. She never mentions her father's name, okay? She never says, my father says, and most of those people have never seen him or even met him. But they realize he must be a pretty good guy because he's got a daughter like that, right? They knew his child, okay? 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, We are ambassadors for God as though God was <coughs> adjuring you through us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, this, it's the rabbi still talking, right? We have no other higher goal than to see someone think more highly of our father or our king. After all, it's not about us. It's about giving him glory. That's where our lives are. Now, the rabbi says, you know the end of the story, right? And old Max says, uh, no, you want to you fill me in? <laughs> so at the end of the story, the daughter gets on the elevator, takes it to the top floor, and she finds her dad waiting at the door. Okay, he's waiting at the door. And what, is, what does the father say? And then the rabbi quotes Jesus. Well done, good and faithful servant. 
Isn't that good? Yeah. And, and so he ends the story, they land and he, they go their separate ways. But there is an example of us living for God or not living for God. In John 21, Jesus is risen from the dead. They're by the lake. They're having some fish. Peter's soaking wet because he swam to shore. And Jesus says, Peter, do you love me more than these? He says, well, you know I love you, Lord. He says, feed my sheep. And he says, Peter, do you love me more than these? He says, Lord, you know I love you. He says, and feed my lambs. He says, Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter says, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. He says, and feed my sheep. Everything about Jesus was about interpersonal relationships. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Everything about him was about that. So if we're going to glorify God, all things work together for those who love God. So if it's not about our salvation or our going to heaven, it's about Jesus and ours showing him to the world. The Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my, my commandments. If you don't love me, you're not good. Why would you? That's right. All right? Peter, do you love me? Having a right, right relationship with the Father is only possible by having a right relationship with each other. Yes. And vice versa. Yeah. And vice versa. Having a right relationship with one another is only possible by having a right relationship with God. That's right. Ooh, ooh, praise the Lord. Our hearts are meant to beat together, but they are not the same beat. That's right. We are all so, so different. We are so diverse. That's why God brings us together. Because yes. that's what covenant is about. That's right. You have a strength I don't have. That's so right. I draw on your strength and you give me strength. In, in a relationship with a man and wife. You know, when, when Regina's weak, I come beside her. Okay, when I'm weak, she comes beside me. You've seen people, you know, you come in, your wife says something wrong, and she says, well, what's, what's, uh, what's eating you? You know? What's up with you? What's your beef, jerky? You know? <laughs> Whatever we say. Instead of coming alongside them and building them up, we put them down and use our strength to push them into the dirt. We've got to watch us in, in relationships. All through our relationships, we can do that. That's right. We can take our strength and push people down, and we can edify them with our strength. Yes. Even Jesus' closest friends got distracted about who got the big seat yes. in heaven. <laughs> right? Even they got distracted. Yeah. And what's Jesus' answer? Become like little children. And he who is greatest in the kingdom of God is servant of everybody. And that word is slave to everybody. Mm -hmm. Woo! Praise the Lord. So, why? Why do we do that? Why would we become a servant all? Not because they are worthy of that. <laughs> Not because they deserve that. Not because they're wonderful because people. Why? That we might elevate the name of our Father, like it said in, in, uh, yeah. in Philippians. Amen. Okay? Why do we elevate the name of our Father? Because we love Him. Right. We, we yeah. are abandoning ourselves to Him. We aren't so much hung up on heaven and what we get out of the deal. We are hung up on what we can give out of this life. Amen. How we can touch people's lives. How we can <clears throat> minister. To right. them. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I'm Lord. I just, I find myself all the time judging my brother. It just is awful. It's awful because I, you know, I hang around people like me. <laughs> it's way to get mad at me because they're just like us. And it just infuriates me because they're just like me. And I'm trying, you know, and I think, oh, gee. And I try, I got to come back to my senses and try to, Minister and elevate instead of bring down. So, three scriptures before we quit. In John 3, 16 and 17, it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then he said, uh, what did he say? And he did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. So if you're on the internet today, 
God gave His only Son not to condemn you or put you down, right. but to speak Amen. life into you and give you eternal life. Amen. And in the in the first chapter of John, in the 12th verse, it says, those who received Him, to them He gave the right to become the children of God. Amen. Even to those who believe on His name. Now it doesn't say a bunch of things. It says, Jesus, believe in Jesus. And then Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is a gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. So if you're coming to God today, don't come with all your wonderfulness. Come the way you are. Yes. Come with who you are. And God can make you more of who you are than you've ever thought before. That's the truth. So Lord, we thank you today. We pray, Jesus, for everybody who's watching. We pray, Lord, come into our lives today. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Come into our lives and make us brand new today. Yes. Yes. Baptize us in your Holy Spirit so we can live for you, Lord. We need your power. We thank you today, Lord. We thank you for your word. It's built us up and strengthened us and made us stand. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to elevate the name of our Father in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Father, draw people to you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah. Lord, I'm thankful we got such a big bag. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to contain all the stuff. And Lord, I, I'm just excited about what you've done and what you're doing. Yes. Lord, thank you for supplying our every need. Yes. Thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Amen. Oh. Matt, with the pancakes, try some uh, cinnamon and... Vanilla. I don't like cinnamon too much, but vanilla I like. You won't taste a lot of cinnamon, but it, it does something special. Now, when Regina makes French toast with cinnamon, I really like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Sir. <laughs> you know, I can eat the of the like a half a pancake and I start to get sick. I can eat like seven waffles. <laughs> same batter, same everything, but waffles are... What are they? Oh yeah, as she said that. Belgium? Mine are more Irish. Norwegian. So God bless you guys. Oh, by the way, Monday at six o'clock at three hundred and fifty Capitol Hill in Reno is a prayer meeting. A bunch of us are getting there at 6 o'clock to pray from 6 to 7, and then we're going to worship and go on into prayer again and it'll end at 8 o'clock. So some of us want to spend more time in prayer, so we're going to get there at 6 and, and pre prelim the pre-prayer. So if you want to come, come. It's going to be, it's going to be good. And you know, if we bring 30 people from Fernley, <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. That would be a lot. Yeah, especially a new church bus. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. So, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. We're a new church bus. I see the new bus.